What's going on? Welcome on into today's video. We are taking a look at the market, which is bouncing back after the recent pullback and is now very close to a new all time high, which would be around 525 or so on SPY. And we currently sit around 517, so about eight bucks away from all time highs. Well, a quiet week in store here. We've got a big week next week in terms of news. We're going to take a look at a lot of charts and tell you what to be watching as we move forward throughout this week. We've got not only the S&P, I wanna talk a little bit about sentiment. I also wanna talk a little bit more about rates and how that is shaping up in conjunction with oil, which we talked about last week. Let's get going. The charts we're using right here is on TradingView. Link down below if you wanna save on any of their paid plans, 15 bucks off of any of them with the link in the video description box. So. If I jump into the one hour time frame on SPY, you'll notice the past two days have not been eh, very, very eventful. A lot of this. So nothing crazy so far. And volume is kind of diminishing. If we take a look at the volume, yeah, volume is diminishing, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Why? Because when volume diminishes, we kind of consolidate, we tend to consolidate. And then we look for a break, either up or down on higher volume, which gives us more conviction in that move. If we don't get that, then we just continue to wait and wait and wait, which it feels like we might be doing for a while, but who knows, who knows? So in terms of the news, next week we have news, but this week, nothing much. Jobless claims on Thursday, sentiment, some Fed speakers on Friday. But next week, Monday, nothing. Tuesday, PPI, and Wednesday, CPI. That is the big stuff to watch into next week, then jobless claims and some more stuff on Thursday as well. So. We kind of have, as we film this video, we have, you know, a couple of days before really anything meaningful from a news perspective, which means the markets could either float or they can kind of just move on their own with price action, just doing their own thing. And of course, there's, of course, there's potential for news to come out overnight, which is always a possibility. But I thought it was interesting to pull up the VIX. Why the VIX? Because take a look at the VIX. This spiked up a couple of weeks ago and has come right back down and now, not to a new low of, of as of late or of the year, but it's come right back down very, very hard on the VIX. Technically speaking, we can probably draw a trend line. Yeah, rough. It's, it's, it's rough, but it's, it, there it is. We're right at that spot where we've seen the VIX, you know, bounce, I guess, over the past four or five months. Something to watch, but the VIX has come right back down, which is not necessarily what you'd want to see if you are looking for more downside in the stock market necessarily, or more fear. Speaking of fear, fear and greed currently sits at a 39. Let's just make sure that it's 39. It sits at a 39. Yes, I was correct, or I did need to refresh. But we've bounced back a bit. We are seeing breath and strength start to try to turn the corner, meaning we're getting some more positive momentum there. Put call ratio did spike a lot a few weeks ago. It's come back a lot, but technically still building some higher lows, which means there's a little more uncertainty, a little more bearish betting in the market. Uh, we obviously know that volatility has come back down, safe haven demand and junk bonds kind of showing two opposites, but I don't really look too close to those. I look more so at put calls, breath, strength, and of course, momentum, which is fairly simple to say by just looking at the charts like this. So levels to watch. Man, it, it's not it's not like we've got some massively well-established levels on the bigger picture time frames. Outside of the highs at around 524.75, meh, we're kind of in the middle of a, a float zone. We did just break above a high volume node right around this 514 to 515 area. So that's an area that we can be looking to see if, if we can hold above that on SPY a better chance of breaking through. But really... From that perspective, not, not a whole lot that we can really dive into, at least that I'm looking at, that I see clearly. I mean, this is, this is the zone, you know, right here, which we're on the north end as we speak, but this is kind of your area of consolidation. We consolidated for a period in here, consolidated for a period in here, and we've got a high volume node, which just means we've traded a lot of volume at that price point, okay? So keep that one in mind. Now, jumping in to some more details. The 10 year, it was up today, after it's been down the past couple of days, which is not super surprising. The dollar also regained the breakdown that it had set last week. So it's regained that. So we're seeing some strength there, which again, continues to show higher lows, which does look good. 
from a bullish perspective, right? It's just trending up. I don't even say bullish, it's just, it's just trending up on the bigger time frames on the dollar. Funny enough that you look over at gold, which I'll pull up gold now. And you know, you kind of see that eh, it's just kind of lower highs, but bouncing around and, and really in a, a consolidation phase. Silver is a similar situation. Bitcoin also kind of similar, trending to the downside as of late, but also not really moving very much at all. Establishing right now a high volume node in the low to mid 60 range, like 63, 64K, high volume node, 67K, high volume node as well. So Bitcoin is going to have to break through, but it's been very quiet for a past couple of weeks. Does that mean that it stays that way? No, no, no. We The, the longer you consolidate, the closer you eventually get to a breakout of the consolidation with momentum, right? So it's either going to be one of these. And we can only say we're getting one day closer, one step at a time. A couple of stocks I want to pull up that were interesting to watch. Amazon is one of them. It is very, very close to a new all-time high. Sorry, AMZN. Very, very close to all-time highs. Around 190 would put you into all-time high territory, just, to, just below that, technically speaking. But the, the line right here was a prior all-time high, and then this blue line is the high that we hit a couple of times or double-topped the past couple of weeks. But again, same thing, strength putting pressure on it. I mean, we, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're one strong day away on the, on the, on Amazon from a, a really nice pop to all time highs. It's just a very strong stock. NVDA had a roughly a break even day. It was down barely technically on Wednesday, but this is starting to set up in a manner that kind of resembles a little bit of a flag, although not perfect, but depends on how you want to view the flag. Either way, you had a very nice move up with some higher lows. And now you are in a little bit of a consolidation period, looking for NVIDIA to break above 920 to 925. If it can do so, that bodes well for a push, dare we say, up into these highs, which would be up in the 950 to 975 range. And if it could hit 975, that would technically be a new all-time high. Again, that's the, that's the question. We are just looking at momentum basically from right now. If that does not occur, You've got a very strong volume node right from 865 to around 905, which we are sitting just on the top of. You want to see for a bullish view here, you'd want to see it holding that and starting to curl back up. We'll see if that occurs. But right now, NVIDIA has made some good strides after pulling back and looking weak just a couple of weeks ago, really not even that long ago, a couple of days ago, really, in the big picture. So with all of that said, the market's kind of, I don't want to say it's in a holding pattern, but there's a couple sectors that I wanted to pull up that were that, that show you we have this massive rotation. XLU is one of them. Look at utilities. The utility ETF has been absolutely crushing it as of late. A lot of energy companies in there. This is one of those ETFs that technically speaking broke the downtrend. Did give you a little bit of a scare here back in April, really a couple weeks ago, but then since then, whew, absolute tear. On top of that, XLF, we were just looking at this one today, XLF is looking pretty strong as well, building a nice higher low and technically breaking over this high. So now we can maybe start to say that we've got a bit of an uptrend developing here with an attempt to push up towards these highs next in the cards? Question mark? Let us know in the comment section down below. We'll also open the comments for any chart requests, which I do have two that I want to pull up right now. One of those is Baba, and then there is one more after this one. Baba, they have earnings coming right up in about a couple of days. Next week on Tuesday, so the day that PPI comes out, Baba has earnings. It's done well. It's trying to regain a pretty substantial point that we did break down below. This has been an area of interest for now many, many months, actually dating back about, what do you want to say, over a, about a year. Yeah, about a year, a little over a year, technically speaking. So this spot right here, around 78 to 80 bucks, is an area of high interest. Earnings, of course, something to be paying close attention to. 83 starts this volume node. We've pretty much filled through this gap in terms of this um, gap in volume, but not very, we haven't been holding here for very, very long, hence why we haven't filled through that very, very much on the volume profile. But watching earnings, all eyes are going to be on earnings. You've got a small gap down to around 76.25, which starts at around 77.15. So about a dollar move or so, 90 cent gap down if we do see weakness. 
to fill back down towards 76.25, potentially something to watch prior to earnings if it cannot hold up going into that earnings report. Next is SoFi, which has done, I don't want to say poorly, but I also don't want to say like it's been good because it hasn't, it's been trending down. It's been the story and risk on. I mean, this is just this just kind of sums up the risk on sp uh, space right now. These stocks have not been very, very strong. They really haven't. They ha earnings is behind us on SoFi, but really the past month, it has not done much. The past two months, it has been in consolidation. Really consolidation from around eight to about 675, mostly in that $1, mostly in about a dollar range between around like 780 and really seven bucks, like an 80 cent range. So really waiting on something there. Now, really, it hasn't gotten like the, okay, flush it out, headed to, to, to the lows. No, it hasn't happened, which is good. I mean, it's, it's holding up. But again, same thing though. It's just, we're really waiting on what seems like risk on stocks to start to turn around. And a big part to that seems to be tied to the 10 year as we've been watching. And the 10 year today was up, but been pulling back. We talked last week, if you wanna go back to one of the prior videos about the connection to oil, oil seems to be leading the 10 year by a couple of weeks. Oil had a good day, but we can't really go off of that. If oil starts to really push back up and get back up into the mid eighties, then that's concerning for the 10 year and for risk on for sure. But if oil continues to kind of trend down, that could mean, you know, maybe some good signs in the 10 year potentially. And that would also mean a good thing for risk on, which would mean so fine theory would potentially do better in those conditions if all else remains the same. That's what we're watching. Hope was helpful. We'll leave some links and resources down below. One of those will be a link to a broker, interactive brokers, which you can, by the way, pair up and trade your interactive brokers account on TradingView through TradingView charts. Double whammy, both links I'll link up down below. Thanks so much for watching. Leave any comments, questions, and requests down below as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.